I move into here. I've got the, close to the lake here. Close to the lake. So I could get water easier for me to walk out there, bring the water in. I've been living this since I moved in in 1990. When I move into this house, nothing in here. Not even a stove, stove pipe, nothing. Nothing. So what I, what I do with my wife and I, we bought this stove. My wife ordered from down south on a cock log, you know, this stove. We got this wood from way across, about, I don't know, uh, let's say three, four, five, three, four, five miles. My family, I got nine, nine children, mm -hmm. six daughters, three sons. My baby daughter, her name is Doreen, she go to school, high school and college in Winnipeg. She came back Christmas, I don't know where to stay. So he had to move, he had to stay with her with the, her sister over there at the house. Same thing, Donna, he's right here with me here, but same thing, because no place to stay here. No, please. This is a door for me. That, that little baby just saw sleep with us, me and my wife, and my, my granddaughter sleeps here. And two over there, one over there on the couch. There used to be two over there, but one of the go, like I say, went to other community and now I'm visiting. This is my washroom here, right here. When it's full, we take this cover up, we take it out, take it outside. So this is the place, my kitchen here. So this is my, my cooking. This is where I put in water. This pill that I use, oil can. When I go out in the leg, I take like this with the axe or the ice or what you see carry with me over there. When I when I chop the whole water come up, if we're going to get help from the government for this community, uh, it would be helpful for us. I really appreciate that. There's uh, 11 people that live in the house. This is not a well-built house. And, you know, the windows are all icy in every little little corner in this house. And the window, the doors are like that, too. And it's like moldy all over the place. And it's not healthy for the kids that lived in here. And what we... Like for the older people that live in this house, what we have to do is like go to the nursing station in order to take a shower or a bath, you know, that's what we have to do. And for the little kids, to, in order to like be in a healthy environment, we have to, you know, heat the water, give them a bath like daily, like even though it's cold outside, we have no like uh, heaters in here. We just use the wood stove and daily my little brother has to like chop wood, bring them inside so we can at least keep the house nice and warm. Go ahead and open that. Oh, we can't. Oh, I see. It's, it's all covered with snow from the outside. That's why you have to keep this thing up with you going. That's just, this is just snow over here. That's snow in there? Yeah. Well, there's two, three, two children that sleep in this room and two adults. And it's very cold in here because, you know, it's like, the windows are just solid frozen, they know the water leaks and the floor is very cold. This is what really bothers us the most is because water dripped from there and this is the the breaker. One of my nieces that stay in this room was that uh, the one that has the VSD, the heart murmur, and she gets sick a lot, you know, lots of times like in the winter time because it's cold in here and can't get all the heat from the kitchen room all the way down here because we just have the wood stove. 
my family, sometimes they get angry and they get frustrated because over and over, we have to mention this over and over again, but nothing's been done about it and it's not going anywhere. Like, we're always going to live in this house and nothing's ever going to be done about it and, you know, so there's nothing we can do. We moved here back in 1972, and since then the population has tripled. And our population today, we approximately have close to 900 people that live in the community. But there has been a decrease in funding, although our population has grown in the past uh, X amount of years. For some reason, we're not really sure of. So that, uh, as we speak, we have about 90 accommodations here. We're backlocked about close to 100 houses. Well, the rate, everything, anything is going today is very sad to say, but uh, won't be next 15 years or more. The biggest problem that we face on First Nations is that our population continues to grow, but yet the funding from the federal government has not increased since 1983. 16 years without an increase in the base capital funding to First Nations. In Manitoba, the demand for homes right now is sitting at about 7,500 homes. Within the MKO uh, region, the 26 First Nations, we're at a, at a need or a backlog of 4,500 homes. So we have a, and, and I, I think that's the biggest thing. People forget that uh, they, they hear homes, they hear units, and they hear numbers. But that's 4,500 families that need a house, they need a place to live, a place for their children to sleep, and, and they don't have that. A healthy home is a key to a healthy family, and uh, the homes in our First Nations are not. They're overcrowded. Um, when you see a home with 14 people in there, sleeping on the floor in the living room on, on pieces of mattresses or foams, um, six people crowded into a bedroom, it leads to sickness, and it leads to an unhealthy environment if, uh, in terms of education. Education of students suffer when there's no quiet place in the house to study at night, no uh, good uh, place to get a good night's rest and perform well in school the next day. We have sicknesses like tuberculosis that are wiped out in Canada everywhere except First Nation communities. And uh, I think that uh, uh, things like family violence, and uh, situations like that can all be tied into housing. Present, we have a, a housing waiting list. We have 196 uh, people on that list, families uh, included. Uh, right now, we're constructing, uh, on the average, between 15 and 30 units per year, uh, depending upon availability of funding. At the present rate uh, that we are constructing, we'll never meet the demand. Uh, we uh, came and did an inspection of this unit, and uh, we found that the flooring in the unit was totally shot, so we decided that we would do a renovation. Uh, we got in underneath and found the floor joists were rotting in it also. Uh, the cost of repairing and renovating this unit became so high that it was not feasible to repair it. We decided then to condemn it and from that point we were going to tear it down and reconstruct a new unit for the family that was living here. A new house was constructed, the family moved into the new house and uh, we came up with the equipment to bulldoze the unit and found that one of the sons from the family that was uh, previously